Welcome back. Today, we shall be deriving the second Maxwell's equation for gravity and introducing the idea of magnetism due to gravity. In the limits of weak gravitational fields, general relativity predicts that moving masses exhibit magnetic properties in the same way that moving charges do. This is called gravitomagnetism, and it is to masses in the same way that electromagnetism is to charges. This effect has been observed many times with relativistic jets serving as the brightest form of validation of gravitomagnetism. Since these magnetic effects have already been observed, it is therefore okay to say that moving masses produce some kind of magnetic field around them, and we shall represent this field with lowercase b. Consider a pipe that is open at one end and contains flowing water, and a receiver at the other end. The amount of water collected by the receiver in a given time is called the water current. This is the same thing with charge. The amount of charge that passes through a given point in a wire is called the electric current and is defined mathematically as the Q to T, that is, the rate of flow of charge with respect to time. So, in general, current is the rate of flow of something with time. So, in the same way, we can define mass current as the rate of flow of mass with respect to time and write it as the m to t. Of course, a mass current is a set of moving masses, and mo moving masses, as we have seen, generate a gravitational magnetic field. The strength of this field must therefore be proportional to the magnitude of the current. So we can write b is directly proportional to i. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification so that you don't miss any video on this series as it is all the videos that will give you a complete picture. If you like the video, please show me by clicking on that like button. Consider two currents carrying pipes, placed as such. Here, I mean mass currents. Let the lengths of the pipes be L1 and L2 respectively, and the effective distance between them be as such, making an angle theta with the current direction of the first wire. Let's consider just a tiny portion of the wire, the L1. The longer the wire, the more the number of moving masses contained within. Hence, the greater the field. Christian Ørsted discovered that the magnetic field generated by a wire is always rotating around the wire in a plane parallel to the wire and the magnetic field lines line on that parallel plane such that all the magnetic field lines are always perpendicular to the direction of the current. But the second pipe is not placed perpendicular to the first, so it is only a component of the field created by the first pipe that will affect the second pipe. In other words, it is only a component of the displacement of the, the masses in the first wire that will create a magnetic field that will affect the second wire. So, we can resolve the length, the L1, like so. Now, you can see that it is the component, the L1 sine theta, that is perpendicular to the second wire, and will therefore affect it, while the component, the L1 cos theta, will not. So, we can see that the magnitude of the field B felt by the second wire is directly proportional to the L1 sine theta. Experimentally, Christian also discovered that the strength of the field felt by wire 2 is inversely proportional to the square of the separation between the wires. So we have this relation. Putting all these relations together, we have the following equation. 
where k is a constant of proportionality. This is the Biot-Savart law for gravitation. The constant of proportionality k can be expressed as follows, where mu naught bar is the permeability of the medium. Permeability is a measure of the extent to which magnetic fields are impeded by a medium. And since it exists for magnetic fields due to charge, it should also exist for magnetic fields due to masses. So, the full expression for the biot savart law is as follows. As mentioned earlier, Oster discovered that the magnetic field generated the wire goes around the wire in a circle. This means that if you enclose this piece of wire in a sphere, there will be no net flux going in or out of the sphere. And this must be the same situation for mass currents. So the total magnetic flux generated by a moving mass that goes through a surface S that encloses the moving mass is equal to zero. And mathematically, we have phi subscript B is equal to the integral over a closed area of B dot S equal to zero. And by the divergence theorem, this is also equal to the integral over the volume enclosed of the divergence of B to B, which is also equal to zero. Therefore, nabla dot B is equal to zero. This is the second Maxwell's equation. So, now we have two of the four equations. The first one was this. In the next video, we will be deriving the third. So, subscribe so that you don't miss out. Check out the link to the first video in the description below.